How's it going, everyone? My name is Victor Mejia. I am a lead instructor at Orange County Code School. And uh, today, I just want to talk to you about a few tips that you can use to uh, turbocharge your Angular testing workflow. So on a quest to find out why more devs weren't testing their Angular apps, I ran a quick Twitter poll. At the top of the list was setup and configuration, followed by being unfamiliar with the, NG, the new ng testing API. So what I want to do in the next few minutes is just go over each one of these points and go over some tips that I have found very useful. So let's get down to business. So setup and configuration. The CLI has been getting a lot of love at ng-com, so I just want to love on it some more. It's, it's so awesome. Install it, scaffold out a new app using ng-new, and testing is just configured right out of the box. Simply run ng-test, and the Chrome instance is launched, watching your specs in, in watch mode. So as you make your changes, it will automatically run your tests. If that's not your thing, you can run it with a single run flag. And what I like to do is run it with the code coverage flag. And what that would do is generate Istanbul reports. Now, I like these reports because I can make sure that the critical paths in my app are being tested. I like to go ahead and, and configure my terminal reporting. I'm kind of picky about my terminal reporting. So to do that, we install the Karma spec reporter. We add the reporter to the plugins, change the reporter to spec, and then add text summary for our Istanbul reporter. And now when I run my test, I get a nice output of each spec in my terminal. And at the end, I get a text summary of my current code coverage. Now, feedback, I look for, for results. As I was working in larger Angular apps and the number of specs in my app was, was growing, that time to get my results was increasing over time. And I thought, there has to be a better solution for this. Wallaby.js is actually the perfect solution for this. What Wallaby.js allows you to do is to get real-time feedback right in your editor. In this case, I'm using Visual Studio Code. And as I'm writing my specs out, I get real-time feedback of whether my spec is, is passing or failing. Integration with the CLI was actually pretty, pretty awesome. They, and their sample repo, they provide uh, you know, two configuration files that you can uh, bring into your uh, app sca scaffold with the CLI. And integration was seamless, so I, I highly recommend you check out Wallaby.js. Now, what about the TestFed API? The Angular team, again, has made it really easy for devs to test your Angular apps. Configure your TestFed module. It's sort of like an ng module. You declare the components that are being tested, and you want to get your handle on three important objects. The fixture, which is used for debugging and testing your component, the component instance, and also the debug element associated with this component. And in your spec, you can change your component's properties or inputs, trigger a change detection cycle for that component, and then use the debug element to test against your templates. The test bit also allows you to stop injected dependencies, which is really useful when doing unit testing. There's some really great testing guides out there. I highly suggest you uh, check them out. And I'll be tweeting out the link for the presentations. Now, what about test maintenance? A lot of devs will come up to me and, and, and ask about this. And th this is at the top of my list. At the top of my list would probably be to organize your tests. Have a top level describe for your component. Use nested describe for functions on your component. We are writing unit tests after all. And then I'd like to have a separate describe lock for my component interaction and functionality. This is where I would test things out against my template. This is useful because as, you know, as we configured our, our terminal reporting, your describe locks will be neatly outputted so you can easily see what tests are passing. A test should tell a story. So on your spec, you know, make a meaningful, read readable sentence. Use the AAA pattern where we arrange, we act, and then we assert. Don't follow dry to a T. Um, it's it's kind, of, kind of weird to say that, you know, but a, a developer should be able to look at your spec and know exactly what's going on without navigating too far away from that place in your code. Mock dependencies to isolate tests. You don't want to use your actual API services, right? So we mock, mock them out. And when configuring your, your test fit module, use a provide object literal. Enforce coverage thresholds. Now, I like to do this because I like to ensure my teams that untested code is not being checked in. We can easily do this with the Karma Istanbul threshold plugin. We add the JSON reporter, add the Istanbul threshold reporter, and then we can, in an object, we just simply configure the global and individual file thresholds. And when I run my tests, if any of these, the, the current 
coverage falls be between the specified thresholds, Karma will exit with an error code. And last but not least, I like to prevent back commits with Husky. Now, what Husky allows you to do is to configure Git hooks by simply adding NPM scripts. In this case, I'm adding a couple of NPM scripts, a pre-commit hook, which will run my linting, and a pre-push hook, which will run my unit test. So that, combined with the enforcing of the coverage of the thresholds, you can really and, you know, enforce clean code and make sure that your, the, your team members are checking in tested code. Here are a couple links. Again, just go to ngtestturbo.firebizapp.com. I'll also tweet it out. I'll be hanging out uh, at noon today in the experts room if you want to talk about testing or anything about Angular. Uh, and thanks so much. Appreciate it.